Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is time for a book haul. So, what books, where's the other one, did I get in the month of May? Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at this one. I got Susan Salis, No Man's Island. This was from a charity shop. I probably bought it, gave it to my mum and she's given it back to me. Um, Susan Salis. Hmm. Uh, on a wild and windswept island, the secrets of the past unravel. Hmm. When Binnie hears the news of the death of her ex-husband, she feels like her tranquil life in the West Country is over. To her surprise, she discovers that he has left her an island in a beautiful up arch pegolo off the coast of Cornwall and the dilapidated house where he spent his childhood. Binnie must take her family to the island, revisit him for the first time in years and work out what to do. As she becomes involved in the life of the island and its inhabitants, she discovers many things about her husband and her own past that will change everything forever. Yeah, I think because it's in Cornwall, that's probably why I picked it up. <laughs> Next, I've got Jojo Moyles, Moyes, the giver of stars. This was from Tesco, charity shop, book thing. Alice Wright marries handsome American Bennett Van Cleve, hoping to escape her stifling life in England. Yet she doesn't much care for her domineering father-in-law or the judgmental townfolk of Baileyville, Kentucky. Restless and misunderstood, she yearns for escape and adventure, finding it in the defiant and unlikely sisterhood who bring books to the isolated and vulnerable of the wilderness. But when her father-in-law and the town suddenly turn against them, Alice fears she'll lose her freedom, friendships and the chance of unexpected love. Ooh. That's cool. Um, I bought one when I was on holiday. I haven't read it, so okay it goes in my collection this is small compared to the normal size of paperback it's quite it's tiny look that's because it's in international it's teeny um yeah so this is kathy reich's cold cold bones i like kathy reich's um in a profession like this you're bound to make enemies and i and I, etc. And it all starts when Dr. Temperance Brennan finds a box on her porch. Inside is a fresh human eyeball. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, with GPS cord that's uh, etched into it, as you do. They lead her to a macabre discovery in a Benedictine monastery, and soon after, she discovered a mummified corpse in a state park. There seems to be no pattern of these killings except that each mimics a killing connected to something a younger temp experienced or barely escaped. Someone is targeting her and she needs to figure out why before they strike again. And then her daughter, Katie, disappears. Woo! It's not very big. And one of my pages have got crushed. Probably when Jennifer knocked it off the thing. So uh, it's, it's 400, well, 300 pages. Oh, I like that. I like those ones. Uh, then I got Stephen King, Apt Pupil. I bought this from a book selling group on Facebook along with another book, which you'll see in a minute. This is one of the Stephen Kings I don't have. And this one is slightly, uh, not much bigger. I think it's slightly taller than the average paperback. So I'm hoping it's still going to fit on my Stephen King shelf. <coughs> um, so Todd Bowden is an apt pupil. Good grades, good family, a paper route or route because it's American. But he's about to meet a different kind of teacher, Mr. Dusanda, and to learn all about Dusanda's dark and deadly past. A decades old manhunt Dusanda has escaped to this day. Yet Todd doesn't want to turn his teacher in. Todd wants to know more, much more. He's about to face his fears and learn the real meaning of power and the seductive lure of evil. I think Paul's football team are losing, so if you've heard that, I do apologize. I also got from that same seller on Facebook group because they sell it for like for a pound and then you pay shipping, which is fine. It ends with us with Colleen Hoover. This is actually in really good condition, so it will stay with my Colleen Hoover collection, which has only got two books on it so far. Number three. Sometimes the ones who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. Excuse me. Lilia hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She's come a long way from the small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston and started her own business. Sounds good so far. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kincaid, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. 
As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love and a link to the past she's left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Ryle is threatened. Hmm. An unforgettable tale of love that comes at the ultimate price. The ultimate price is usually death, so, okay. Now I did, oh there's the other one, I thought it I bought one of my favourite books from when I was a child um, and it's Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. Subtitled The Autobiography of a Horse it is. It doesn't actually tell you much about it but basically it tells the story of Beauty who is a black stallion um, and then Colt and basically it's told from the horse's perspective so if I read the first few lines before I change the battery it starts off with, The first place that I can well remember was a large pleasant meadow with a pond of clear water in it. Some shady trees leaned over it and rushes and water lilies grew at the deep end. Over the hedge on one side we looked into a ploughed field and on the other we looked over a gate at our master's house which stood by the roadside. At the top of a meadow was a grove of fir trees and at the bottom a running brook overhung by a steep bank. So it does tell you the story of this horse and it's not pleasant in, at times and Anna Sewell actually wrote this book as a guide on how to treat horses correctly um, in a story form so she's telling it from the horse's perspective of how the horse was treated and how the horse felt about it and it's become a children's classic but it wasn't actually written for children originally it was written for um, people who dealt with colts and horses but there you go but I love it and I'm looking forward to rereading it Next on the list, ooh, 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 I love books. Okay, just change the battery. Next up is book two in the Elizabeth Peters, Amelia Peabody murder mysteries. This is called The Curse of the Pharaohs. <clears throat> when a cry of help goes out from a colleague in distress, Amelia Peabody is only too happy to drop everything in England and travel out to Egypt to help. The colleague in question is Lady Baskerville, whose husband, Sir Henry, has died suddenly under bizarre circumstances at the site of a tomb in Luxor. Little wonder, then, that the newspapers are proclaiming the curse of the pharaohs has struck. On arrival in Luxor, Amelia and her husband, Emerson, find the camp in disarray and the workers terrified by the appearance of an apparition Amelia promptly christens the Lady in White. Yet this does not deter her from seeking the truth behind Sir Henry's death. Armed with nothing more than her trusty parasol, Amelia sets about bringing order from chaos and herself much closer to danger. Now, I really love the first one in this series, so I can't wait to get started on this one. It's not going to be long. I bought two books in the works last weekend. I'm trying to read my TBR, not add to it, but still they came. And they were the Grishaverse, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So I will read it for those of you who don't know. And if you don't know, where have you been? So this is <clears throat> Six of Crows. I will be taking the sticker off. <clears throat> Let's have a drink. I say it. Criminal pro prodigy Kaz Brecker has been offered a chance at a deadly heist. Break into the ice court, a military stronghold that has never been breached, and retrieve a hostage whose knowledge could change Grisha magic forever. To succeed would mean riches beyond Kaz's wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharp suitor, shooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart render using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes, six dangerous outcasts, one impossible heist. Together they might just be unstoppable if they don't kill each other first. Now I never thought I'd pick, well, there were times when I thought I'd pick this up and then there were other times I thought, oh I don't know. But having read the back, it's actually quite good and... The Independent described it as Ocean's Eleven set in a Games of Thrones-esque world. <laughs> so I like that. And then of course we've got the second one, which is Crooked Kingdom. So, Cass Brecker and his crew pulled off a heist so daring even they didn't think they'd survive, but instead of divvying up a fat reward, they're fighting for their lives. Double-crossed and badly weakened, the crew is low on resources, allies and hope. As old rivals and new enemies descend on Ketadam to root out the secrets of, Ju of Jurda Perem, a dangerous substance capable of altering the very fabric of Grisha magic, Kaz's cunning and his team's fragile loyalties are tested to their limit. 
A war would be waged within the city's dark and twisting streets and a battle for revenge and redemption that will decide the future of magic and the fate of the world. Wow. So I haven't read anything about this before other than the backs of the book so I might try and read at least one of those in June. I don't know. And the last books I've got are the same book so I've got two of the same and yes that's because I'm crazy. And it is, well, I'll show you, prove it, Icon <laughs> Killed Marilyn Monroe by uh, Gary Vitacarulis. This published by Amazon. This one is from Bitman Media. So I got two copies because I ordered from Bearman Media as soon as it was announced. However, I didn't realise that the Amazon version would be out the next day or two days later and would come quicker than the Bear Man Amida version, which took literally two months to arrive. It didn't arrive until I, well, it was on holiday. I think it arrived around the last day I got back, the day I got back, something like that anyway. So I have two copies, but that's okay because it doesn't matter if I wreck one copy because as you can see, I've got it tabbed, some tabs in it. Um, I'll read you the back. So it starts with, does anybody really want to know what caused, caused the death of Marilyn Monroe? The long afterlife of a cultural and cinematic icon Marilyn Monroe has created a tragic paradox. In this post-truth era, Monroe has been recast as a victim of powerful men, a virtual simulacrum of desire and death. The sensational narrative constantly regurgitated in media reports, books and documentaries rests on a stacked deck of hearsay and outright lies. Conspiracy theories offer a simplistic yet tantalising framing device for the abundance of information hurled at us by global mass media. In an explosive takedown, Gary Vitico Rubles, author of Icon, the lifetimes and films of Marilyn Monroe, unpacks the falsehoods perpetuated by a rogues gallery of shadowy opportunists. With surgical skill, he separates fact from fiction, probable theory from outlandish rumour. As a practising psychotherapist, the author is uniquely qualified to re-examine Monroe's lifelong struggle with mental illness and spiralling addiction to medications liberally pre prescribed by successive doctors. In this definitive study, based upon decades of research, legitimate sources, the never-before-released Los Angeles District Attorney's investigation and police investigations from 1962, 1975 and 1985, the reader is presented with facts to finally learn the truth about how Monroe died and who was responsible. You'll see this in my wrap-up. I have read it. Volume 2 is out and I am currently reading that. That will be in my haul at the end of the month. So those are all the books I am that crazy and I'm going to get it in hardback as well that I got in the month of June this one you'll be seeing in my wrap-up shortly the rest of them are out when you're going to see them again because it's me and I have thousands of books to read either on my Kindle or... and I broke my book cart I lent on it with my weight on it I had no chance anyway that's enough of that <laughs> which book do you want to see me read in this month um, let me know and I will read whichever one you want me to Okay, so you choose one of the books I mentioned. Obviously, not this one because I've read it. Uh, any one of the books. Obviously, if you're going to pick uh, one of Six of Crows or Crooked Kingdom, pick the first one because I want to read it in order because, you know, I've got to read Six of Crows first. If you want me to read that, let me know in the comments below. And I will read that especially for you. So, most votes wins. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.